Ted Jones messed with the wrong melon farmers. Ted Jones, I also call him the eighth wonder of the real estate world. Ted Jones, who knows, you know, it could be... Ted Jones? The Ted Jones World Podcast. Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Ted Jones, alongside very funny man, very funny comedian, Peter yeah. Moran. Welcome to the world. How are you, bro? Here. Dude, I'm, I'm doing great. I came in here. I look around. It looks like you're about to have like a, a profile done on your life. You got the place set up so nice. Dude, it's, r- it's really hilarious that you say that. Okay, so I heard this Joe Rogan quote. He was like, yeah. you just got to live like there's a documentary crew yeah. following you. And bro, literally right here. On my on my door, you'll see it when you walk out. It just says documentary. For real? <laughs> yeah. So there's <laughs> this, this is just something I just I just recently implemented. So uh, Peter Moran, um, good pal of mine now, I guess through bro. Where do we first meet? We met at op- in open mic initially, right? Yeah, first time. And then um, now I think you know just sending each other um, those direct messages. I think it's we became closer. And then yeah. I was just like, dude, you got to come on the podcast. And then you were down. I'm I'm always down. You don't. You, there are not a lot of no's in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. So you are in St. Mark's right now, correct? Yeah, St. Mark's in the middle of it. Uh, it's like it's like noisiest bedroom in America. That's what I like to say. Really? So yeah. are you are you like on the avenue then? I'm like Second Avenue, St. Mark's, and like first floor bedroom, the one close to the street. Oh, nice. So like I'm on the second floor here, and yeah. you'd expect to have like a lot of noise, but like being on a cross street, I think really saves me. Yeah. And then also being on like the second floor of a walk up, it's like being on the penthouse, you know, like don't have to walk up to the fifth flo- floor. Yeah. No, this is an idea. That's pretty setup. fresh. Yeah. yeah. Looks like a more of like a dark alley vibe when I was walking in here, like like deals going on in the background. Yeah, <laughs> dude. No, no, no. Literally, especially with like the scaffolding out front. It's it's a uh, I don't know, and the and the lack of windows. But we got good airflow here. Nobody worry at home, um, or nobody listening, um, worry about us getting COVID because we are uh, clean over here. So what's up, man? Give me a, give me a little bit of a background about you, man. I don't know much about you. Um, you accepted my invite over here. Very 2020 of you, you know, not worried about my strangerness to you, but, uh, go ahead, Peter. I mean, you said it comedy about two years in doing that. Uh, a lot of writing associated with that Uh background in, in baseball. I I work, I work in, I work in finance, but it's not relevant. Okay. Yeah. All right, dude. So when I was, when I was uh, 12 years old, I needed to make the decision between baseball and tennis and I stupidly chose tennis. Uh, Well, I mean, dude. Okay. So when I was 12 years old. I even like I we had um a uh, a triple A baseball player Joe Zhang he uh, pitcher on the podcast like a uh, number of months ago you guys should check it out uh, but I, I was talking to him about my stats and he just fully didn't believe me that <laughs> one year when I was twelve years old I was literally batting eight ninety two <laughs> like bro I was playing I, I'm against not sure I well you. dude I know nobody <laughs> believes me I was because I was playing against like white Jewish kids like in Peter Stuyvesant it was called Peter yeah. Stuyvesant okay. literally okay. But, like, I was a very good shortstop, very yeah. good pitcher, hit a couple bombs. So like, I had, like, a, like a year and a half where I was insanely good at baseball. But then I chose tennis. It bad. Also, age 12, though, is, like, the time to shine in baseball. Last yeah. year was, like, a big kid on the small diamond just dropping bombs. Exactly, oh, bro. Take me back. Like, dude, <laughs> pitching from 45 feet, forget about it. I was throwing, yeah. like, 65 miles an hour or however fast. And then it yeah. felt like... You know, like when they do the Williamsport stats, right, right, they're right. like, oh, yeah, it's like coming in at like 95. <laughs> like it's it basically like 98. That. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally with like the aluminum <laughs> bats, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. I know. I heard in some in some leagues they um, they banned the aluminum bats. Did, like, yeah. did you have that situation or no? Well, they banned a certain type. They made the bats like have less pop. But I played in a wood bat high school league. It wasn't it wasn't oh. the whole city was wood bat. Dude, but that's pretty. Was. That's yeah. pretty uh, official. Where'd you go to school? Uh, small school in Buffalo, Christian Central Academy. Okay. That sounds like they'd have a good baseball team and yeah. a good basketball <laughs> team, too, maybe. Maybe one kid went to Syracuse. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, gradu- I graduated. Well, well, we had some good. It was like a K through 12. We had some good nice. kids in, like, middle school that went on and went to different high, high schools, schools and then went to good schools. We, I graduated in a class of 35, so you couldn't, like, keep talent right. there. Dude, you know? I went to a small school, uh, too, like 55 people. Okay. Oh, for real. But um, it was just because, like, it was a smaller school, not because I grew up in a small town. Because I grew yeah. up in uh, New York City. Oh. And I went to, like, this weird school. I mean, it, it was a great school, obviously. Professional children's schools, like, where they have actors, singers, dancers, models, and athletes go. Okay. And basically, like, if you need to take off, like, a Thursday or Friday, like, when I was a tennis player and I needed to go travel to the tournament right. or whatever, they'd send me the homework or they'd let me take the test on Monday yeah. when I got back. But go ahead. Give me um, uh, a, a rundown of how you grew up <laughs> in uh, Buffalo. 
Uh, very sheltered, homeschooled. I only went to two. Bro, I was homeschooled for, for a year, for bro. Real? It <laughs> was the uh, the amount of torture I got from all my eighth grade boys too. Like, yeah. you don't have any friends, like. Th- and then meanwhile, I was throwing all the ragers in ninth right. grade just because like I had the sick basement. But anyway, go ahead, <laughs> homeschool, dude. This is great. We're finding so much about it about each other. All right, I I, I was a different homeschooled. <laughs> there were oh, no okay. ragers. What? Oh, but um, were your, your parents taught you. My mom, yeah. Okay, yeah. A- and that was for h- for how long? I went to I went to two years of high school only. So I was homeschooled till I was sixteen. Uh, so I m- I mean I had big family. Everyone they went ahead. They went all the way through high school, graduated, then went to college. And and while, while being homeschooled, while being homeschooled. Right. So I was the fifth kid, but I was the first to actually go to school. Wow. Uh, just because like my brothers th- who I would like do uh, sports with and whatnot, they were gone. And I was like, all right, I need to like go to a real school, play for a real team, and like have a life for a second. So yeah. you were you were pretty good at baseball. What happened? All right, I mean, I'm sure you're <laughs> still good, but like, why aren't you in the in the leagues, bro? Uh, I I mean I w- I was I was never there. I was I you know I played at a D three school in college, oh, which you is go? like uh, Wheaton College, Illinois. In uh, okay, there's because there's a Wheaton in Massachusetts. Yeah, too. and they have a really good program they in really Illinois. The the Wheaton Mass, they won the national championship a couple Division times. Division three, they did. Yeah, yeah. So they're cool. they're a solid program. Um, we we were pretty good. I mean, I had a I had a good like I had a good college career. Um, you know, but but the amount of kids that get drafted out of D three, it's like fifteen a year probably. Right. So like, you well, I mean, at like least I mean, at least kids from D three get drafted. I feel like yeah. in the NBA, like nobody yeah. gets drafted from D three. Yeah, you can develop in four years, uh, especially as a pitcher. That's mostly what it is. Pitchers yeah. that like put on eight miles an hour while they were in in college. You know, it's interesting you say that because Joe Zhang he actually went to a community college uh-huh. and then uh, transferred to UConn, where I went to college. Oh yeah. So he went to like Cumberland Community College or something, and then that's where I think like the scouts really were paying attention to him, which is yeah. interesting. Like th- these, ba- I mean. I feel like baseball, uh, I, I don't want to say it's like easier to make in baseball because obviously it's not, yeah. but baseball, just like when they draft people or in like the 2020 draft, how many picks are there? Like 700? There's like 1,500. Right. Yeah. And then what percentage of those people even make it to the major leagues? It's like sub 1%. Right. Out, out of those 1,500? Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. So like, what do you think that the difference is between the guy like yourself playing D3 who were, you were like thinking about potentially, you know, getting into the draft mm-hmm. and... Um, you know, like not getting in, getting in, yeah. and get not getting in. I mean, it, I was a pitcher, so it's it's purely, almost pure. It, it's velocity is the hugest thing. Like right, you right, have right, to totally. hit a pr- certain point, and I and I didn't. I threw eighty six, eighty seven. Need to be as a right hand pitcher, ninety bare minimum. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's always like hope. Will I get there? Because I made some big jumps first couple of years, but I think by junior year I was down a little. I was having some shoulder and. Uh, some shoulder issues and uh, that was like the nail in the coffin i was mm-hmm. like this is over got surgery through way slower it oh, was like that was okay. a wrap what, so do you, what like do you have tell me john surgery uh torn labrum so oh, just shoulder yeah. surgery yeah, yeah yeah i had an issue with my labrum before but Dude, the ahead. swing in the tennis racket that's not that's yeah. not good for well your arm either. The, the, the swing and like the serve too yeah uh, no yeah. but uh, but like i found when i was like 11 and 12 years old like there would be times when my arm l- almost felt like it was going to fall off after i yeah. pitched six innings like oh, there were some yeah. crazy times like that yeah i mean it's it's horrible for you. I haven't thrown a baseball since I graduated. It's like four and a half years now. Like it's it's a. I loved it. It was my whole life for a while. But like it's terrible for you. It's yeah. <laughs> it's like just you you basically get injured. I was lucky that it happened when I was twenty and not like sixteen. You know. Right. Right. So um, you are living with a roommate now. Dan yeah. Marks? Yeah. A guy named Ted actually. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> um, and you said you b- are working in finance, but that's just during the day. Yeah, during the day, some finance. I mean, it's kind of. I don't like what I do. Okay. But it's Fair. kind of nice to like, n- I don't work that hard. Everyone thinks, oh, you work in an investment bank. Like, oh, you must work 14 hours a day. And yeah, there's a I moment, there was a moment like that, but it's not like that anymore. So I put a lot of time towards comedy, uh, even pre COVID, not working from home, put a lot of time towards comedy and still can hold like a decent job. I hate it, but it's not that much time. Right. So, so I feel, I feel fortunate in that regard. And I mean, I'm, I'm an obsessive guy. Like I'm, if you give me time, I'm just like, I'm doing stuff like this. I'm writing and I'm getting on stage. So, so I just need, I need time to work on it. And this job lets me be patient right. on that, you know? That's cool. Um, so how has COVID affected you? I guess in terms of, well, I mean, I guess you're not doing spots right now, but in terms mm-hmm. of like writing and moving out and about, cause where did you, where did you go back to Buffalo at all? Two weeks. Two weeks in Buffalo, two weeks in Tennessee, but I've been in New York aside from that. Okay. So a lot of forced solitude, yeah. which is, it's tough, but like I've, I have done a ton of writing. 
which is great because you know when you're getting on stage all the time it's like oh when am i going to write like a packet or a pilot or something it's like you have no time to do anything but write sharpen your bits get get on stage right you just spent countless hours during this so it's a transition like i love comedy performing comedy more than anything but like being able to like really develop some of my like scripted writing Mm -hmm. has been good for me and uh, I also had, like, a two-month period where I just played online poker and did nothing else. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 stayed al- I stayed mostly focused, but I took a moment in the summer. Are you uh, – do you play video games at all, at that new Xbox or PS5? Nah, I, I gave up video games in, like, high school when uh, I stopped being good at Madden. Me too, man. Oh, yeah? You were yeah. – you, what happened with Madden? I just couldn't keep up. <laughs> I just – I have no – if you give me the Xbox, that's what happened. When people started playing the Xbox, I could not do it. I was a PlayStation guy. They switched to the Xbox, and I was just trash. And that's all any of my friends played. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm just watching. So, like, towards the end of eighth grade, I kind of, like, like veered off to, like, not playing um, Xbox as much. I think it was 360 at that time. But there was a time where I would just play Grand Theft Auto, and mm-hmm. I would just take the helicopter to the top of the Empire State Building and just jump out. Like, that's how <laughs> bored I was with it. And, like, the amount of cheat codes that I use in all video games, even, like, yeah. The Sims. You ever play The Sims on the computer? Yeah. You do like the uh, semicolon, uh, exclamation point, semicolon, exclamation point, semicolon, exclamation point, and then you just get like $10,000 every time you click it. (laughs) So I was just like, just like me with the video games, I feel like I I got bored eventually, which is like a gift and also a curse if you like really want to be, you know, involved in video games a lot. But there's some people that just like can't get off uh, their systems. Yeah, and that's a ton of people during... During this time, it's like it's uh, it's fine. It's the same with me, like playing playing poker, or whatever. It's like okay, for solitude, I'm gonna do something that passes the time, whatever. But then at some point, it becomes the reason for your solitude. It keeps you away from everything else, and that's I don't know. Like I'm I'm never a guy that like you give me all the money in the world, I couldn't just like chill. I couldn't just like play video games till the day I die. I just like chill vibe out. Like I need to feel as if I'm being productive or something. Right. I so hear you, man. Well, that's yeah. a, that's a good that's a good thing. It's it's good and. Except, like, Saturday morning. I'm like, all right, what are we doing? <laughs> right, right. How long have you lived in your apartment? Uh, Like, a year and a half. I've been in New York, like, three years, but I've been on St. Mark's for, like, a year and a half. And this is with the same roommate for all three years? Had, had different. Had a high school friend that I lived with for the first year. What happened with that? Uh, He got married. So, oh, um, you know, I just want to bring a wife into the Yeah, yeah, yeah into apartment. the mix. Right, right, right. Yeah, he's in Connecticut now. Uh, But, yeah, I that's the other thing. I've got... I've got a group of uh, seven friends that I went to high school with, and now six of them are married. I'm 26. Oh, fuck, dude. That's, yeah. I, that's like, super young. It's it's horrifying. So, like, one of my boys uh, married his boss, who uh-huh. was, like, 12 years older than him and had a child. Oh, yeah. That was my random roommate from college. So, like, <laughs> the story with that was that his uncle had gotten him an internship in New York City. Mm-hmm. And w- the whole time during this internship, he was telling me, he was like, Jones, I'm like, my boss wants to bang me, Jones. Yeah. Like, I swear, dude, like, she's, like, sending me this text, doing this, right. that. I'm like, dude, shut up. Like, your boss does not <laughs> want to bang you. And then I, um, a year and a half later, like, he was planning on going back to San Francisco because that's right. where he's from. And the boss, like, threw this insane party. She must have spent upwards of, like, I don't know, 75 to oh, 100, God. 75 hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars just on this kid's going away party and then like i finally told him that night i was like damn dude i think your, your <laughs> think boss actually <laughs> a- actually might want to bang you and then like a couple weeks later or maybe it was like a week later right before he was about to leave to go to san francisco uh she invited us like all of us knuckleheads out to like one of her friends halloween party like everyone yeah. there was just like older and you know super classy in yeah. there I don't know, like Marie Antoinette costumes <laughs> or whatever. It's like whatever a mature <laughs> costume might be. Yeah, I, I uh, feel it. <laughs> so he was like about to roll out with us. Like uh, we were like, all right, like, dude, we're leaving. We're going to go to bars. And he was about to come with us. And I was like, no, dude, you got to stay. Yeah. So there you go. And now, and now, and now he, yeah, and now he's a child too. Like a <laughs> one-year-old, I think, as wow. of like uh, probably coming up. Dude, that is but like, yeah. that is a bad thing that happened because now every intern, because that's every intern that go to New York. Dude. I mean, my boss is in love literally, with me, dude. <laughs> literally. And also, I, I'm watching the show, uh, a, a Teacher. Have you heard of it? Yeah, just uh, caught up this morning. You just caught up? Yeah. Dude, I just caught up this morning. <laughs> literally. I was. That's hilarious that you said that. I was watching uh, for, oh, I, I watched it. out the door. Um, so you watched episode six. Yeah. And is there another episode after this? There's, the there's one coming, but there, I think there's two coming, which feels, it feels kind of really? wrapped up. Yeah, uh, it does. Like yeah. the, the tears walking into the school, <laughs> like as a right. teacher who just banged your student. I don't know where, where you can go from here other yeah. than just like tie up loose ends. Like, yeah, there isn't a lot. Go- you know, and also I feel like 
there's not like uh, th- there's not a lot of depth in between the scenes, like tied no. to the st- that the scenes together, right? Don't you feel not like they kind of just bounce around? They sped that up, yeah, so much, I right? Think, like I don't know, I've I've watched it, I've enjoyed it, I would watch the next yeah, one. Me but too. Like, technically, if I were to like break it down, it's like this is not a good show, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> this right? Is not well. I think it's just super interesting and just like the fantasy of like. I don't know. I don't know for you, but like me, like yeah. banging my teacher is fresh. Yeah, so home, I was just like, all right. <laughs> 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 Literally, you're like, where does this happen? <laughs> oh, so yeah. funny. But um, w- I w- so I was watching a teacher. Um, but wait, why were we talking about why that was relevant? Uh, the uh, older woman marriage. Yeah, thing. yeah, the older woman marriage thing. Uh, but I don't know, man. I'm definitely not ready for marriage as of right now. No. I'm certainly not kids. And no. you being one uh, out of your seven seven friends who are not. Married? How do you feel about that? Uh, I'm I'm annoyed. Like it's not. I don't feel pressure, especially because they're not in the city. I don't feel like oh wow, I, I need to get my oh, life together. I need right. to get married. But I'm annoyed that like I can't talk to my friends about anything no. relevant. Like dating someone as an adult, can't talk to them about that. Being single, can't talk to them. About that. Living in the city, and whatever. Choose. It's not like everyone has to live in New York and and do their thing. You can live in a suburb, have some kids young, have a dog, whatever. But I won't, and now I have nothing to talk about other right. than like. <laughs> and I also feel like if you want to tell them any secrets or anything, there's no more secrets. Yeah, because because that's just going straight to their the, lives. Oh yeah, right? I mean, I might as well just like put them in the group text <laughs> at this point. <laughs> <laughs> like Literally, <it's> just <laughs> like send them uh, a DM. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Um, so Peter, do you have do you have any way? Um, I guess any description on on how we met? I guess just besides like what I initially said on the top. We, I was, dude, I was laughing at your set uh-huh. and, um, I don't know. I think I caught, I think I caught your eye cause I was <laughs> laughing. You know, it's like anytime somebody laughs at like somebody's joke, you're like, right, oh, fresh. Right. I like that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, it's so uh, cool. besides that found you on IG and then just, we started chopping it up, man. And then, yeah. you know, I've been enjoying the water reviews. I myself, <laughs> uh, I've, I've started doing coffee reviews. So I oh, think yeah. that was like, I don't want to say I fully bit your bit, but uh-huh. like maybe that's like, uh. You know, like a reviews thing, just a, yeah, a beverage reviews, review. Reviews are out there. You're you're totally good on the on the coffee review. I just <laughs> like good. I like I like because reviews th- they exist. I want I like water reviews just because it's it's like um it's making a joke of <laughs> make that friends doing reviews because I just review. <laughs> what by the way, this stuff, this water is yeah. excellent. You like that? <laughs> Great water, straight from the tap. <laughs> Nine and ten. I want. I want like Dasani to give me a brand deal at some point, but I've taken it so far off the rails from like being anything serious, <laughs> re- resembling reality. But yeah, I I just I want to get in. I I was more weird when I started comedy. Like I was really awkward, and I think I like pretended I was faking it, uh, and then I became more confident on stage, and I lost a little bit of that awkwardness. So when I do water reviews, that's a chance to me like really hone that character. That like right. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Character. (laughs) 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 Yeah, man, that, that, uh, (laughs) that gets me going. Um, but just besides that, yeah, it's just, uh, on IG, right? Yeah. But it's funny. It's like we, we DM a couple times and I'm like, all right, anytime you post something, anytime I see it, it's like, all right, I'm invested now. I want to see what's going on. And I saw, I saw the coffee reviews. I saw that you, you come across anything good in, in your reviews yet? Not yet. Well, I've only been doing it. I'd say, uh, Eight or nine days. I've done okay. it like every day, but like I haven't found that nine, you know, that nine threshold. Yeah. And it's tough just because like these days coffee is either really dark or really watery because mm-hmm. it's, it's easy to do either way. You know, if you want it to be really dark, you just put extra coffee grounds in there and you want it to yeah. be light. You just become like, um, I don't know, like a McDonald's of some sorts or, or, or whatever it is. It, there really isn't much difference between mu- like you give me like a five, six, seven rated coffee. They're all mm-hmm. like. Yeah, get the McDonald's coffee. It's easier. Sure, there. Right. You come across a good Cheap one, too. like you can't, you can't well, get that. Well, where? Out. Like where? You have any by your house? I get mud. That's that's a oh, recommendation. Okay. Like, I'm a latte guy. Ice latte usually. Okay. I'll start drinking normal. Right what kind of milk do you have with that latte? I'll do, I'll do whole milk. I'll do two percent. Interesting. I'll, if I make one at home, because I do with their grounds, I'll toss a little uh, cream in there. Cream on the latte. It's a it's a bit much. It's decadent. But Instead it is of delicious. the whole milk? Yeah. Do you ever try plant milk? Vegan I style? Haven't, I haven't. Are really? you vegan? I am. Oh. I have I have fish once in a while. Once okay. a m- once a month. I guess a pescatarian really, but like I sure, I don't really sure. have sushi. And if I if I were to eat fish, it'd be like a salmon maybe or okay. sushi. But yeah. So um I don't have I cut it out when I had jaw surgery initially. Oh, shit. Um last July. So, like, I had TMJ. I don't know mm-hmm. if you n- know what that is. It's basically when, like, your bite um, is crooked and, like, uh-huh. one side of your jaw grows further out than, okay. like, the other side. 
So like I had a crooked smile a little bit. Like it, wa- it wasn't anything that Jake was like Hall. gonna kill me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing anything that that was like gonna kill me. But like my gums on one side were depleting and my teeth were depleting, mm. and they were like, oh, your enamel's all gone. You know that shit that like dentists yeah. talk about. Like, you got to floss, and by the way, your enamel's all gone. <laughs> uh, but I had like massive surgery, and I couldn't eat anything. You know, like I couldn't eat a banana for real for like seven weeks. Wow. Like a banana. So. You're so getting, like, a tube? Excuse me? You get like a tube? No, just, like, it was everything? just it for like the first week, it was really tough to put down calories. Like oh. throughout the whole process, I probably lost like 15 pounds, oh. but um, it was everything blended up. It was just oatmeal, soup, and anything that I could really get down. Liquids, yeah. if I were to have like a shake or uh-huh. something like that. Um, but it really was difficult for me to chew anything. And then if like I tried to have chicken or any like steak, forget about it. Like oh, that yeah. wouldn't have been a possibility until like, you know, six or seven months after the surgery. So I kind of just got into eating healthier just because those are really the only things that were mushy enough to like swallow. No homo. But um, (laughs) I I, kind of just switched my whole uh, diet, man. And the last time I had meat was on the Popeyes versus Chick-fil-A episode, which I think was like episode 11. Okay. And uh, but did you hate it when you came it's back? It's been a while. Like, this is nasty now. Well, when I had the bite of that chicken sandwich, I thought it was pretty good, to be honest. Yeah. But um, well, if you like fully think about it, I don't want to like you know put my my vegan um thoughts on on you, but I guess I will for a second. <laughs> but if you just like once you're a vegan and you fully think and see like what other people are eating, like why are you eating that? You know what I mean? Like that thing's yeah. dead. What? Why are you eating? You're, that? you're talking about the concept of just like you're. Eating a dead animal? Or are you talking like the brutality that. aspect? Which sure, both. You yeah. Know, the <laughs> thing is, people are like, "Oh, why are you vegan? Like for health or for animals or for the environment?" Yeah. I'm like, "All three, bro." Right. Yeah. You know, fair. and I and I can say that, even though initially it was maybe because it was easier to eat. Yeah. Now I enjoy it. There's so many places that do like Uber Eats, Seamless, Postmates, mm-hmm. um, that it's become pretty easy. Like I found a pizza that I really like. I found a burger that I really like. Uh, Satan is kind of like steak. I never really okay. was much of a much of a steak guy, but for me, I think uh, the the switch was pretty pretty seamless. Minus like not being able to have milk chocolate, uh-huh. that was a little tough. Oh, you can't have milk chocolate. Yeah, oh. there's milk, you know. That's right. uh, yeah. um, but like super <laughs> dark chocolate, I could have uh, no cheese. And people are, people always say that cheese is like the thing for them. Cheese is the no no. Yeah, and no eggs. By the way, go ahead. The cheese. As far as I know, at least from like a ethical standpoint, uh-huh. it's probably okay. At least there's no murder involved in the cheese. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm sure that there's some uh, there's some correlation between, even though there's not maybe yeah. direct murder. That's fair. That's but fair. like there's some sort You're of complicit murder in, in yeah in the mix. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think it's pro- I think it's ethically wrong to eat animals. But sure. Like, I'm just gonna turn a blind eye. As Dude, as, as, as everybody <laughs> in the world does. Yeah, I. The the clock is ticking on how how long you can <laughs> even eat meat for, bro. Yeah, like it might go extinct pretty soon. Who knows? I I yeah. I think I think we're cracking down. I think on a much larger level, as humans, we're realizing that we're all terrible and the worst. society is rooted in just horrible atrocities on every level, every single thing. And eventually, like I do think, probably we need to be horrible to continue to exist from an evolutionary standpoint. But at some point, maybe we find the way to just like vibe out together, including right. with the animals, and we don't eat them. But uh, I'm gonna keep my head in the sand as long as I possibly can. And I know it's the wrong thing to do, but it's the happier thing. Well, to do. it's what all humans have been yeah. doing, and will continue to do probably. Yeah. Okay, so have you seen this alien thing? What the hell is going on with this Mamalia thing? Do you know what yeah. I'm talking I about? I hear everyone this talking about silver it, pole in. They found it in Utah. Yeah, and then they found it in Romania, and now it's apparently gone again for the second time. Wha- I w- I want an update on this Utah, sure. by the way. That's more questionable that it showed up there. Yeah, I'm n- I'm not I'm not sure. It was like in the middle of I don't know all these rocks and stuff. Do you believe yeah. in aliens? I do. Yeah, I think I do too. Yeah, why not? Like, why would there not be aliens? Yeah, I don't know if we've spotted them if they're in contact, but I think out we there. have. Have yeah. you seen that documentary? The fuck is that guy's name? We've talked about it before. Um, this guy with like big glasses. It's like on Hulu. It was like nineteen eighties. He saw some UFOs. Is this one that always gets memed, the aliens one. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but oh, Ray like Lazar. Okay, is his name. Anyway, just like some guy who uh, was working with the government briefly and had seen UFOs, and then 
kind of like told people and then they shunned him. Mm -hmm. Just like the whole like classic, there's definitely alien situation. And then Obama uh, the other day was asked if um, like there had been any briefings on UFOs and he just like refused to talk about it. Really? Which is fresh. And like, I can't wait till Trump gets out of office and he's like, there's, (laughs) there's fucking aliens. All right. There's fucking aliens. Like, I feel like he would smell the beans. He's good for one thing. Just tell us, dude. (laughs) Yeah. the only way you can get half the country to like you back. He's like, I'm not going to tell you if I pay you taxes or not, but those aliens are fucking real. (laughs) What is the deal with this guy recounting stuff? Are people uh, people where you're from in the small suburban um, town? Yeah. What what are their kind of political beliefs? And like you say, like your whole family for the most part was homeschooled. Yeah. Um. What was that kind of like? I would say it's a. M- I'm probably in a more conservative circle where where I'm from than the city is as a whole, Buffalo. But I would, I would say people my age are more are still fairly liberal in buffalo you know but i would say the middle age and beyond it's probably pretty conservative there i would actually i don't know what the numbers are in terms of in terms of voting i went there but i would say yeah my circle um that grew up in fairly conservative relative to the to the demographic to the age group but as a whole still not that conservative and where did um a lot of the kids go to college from your high schools like if they went to state schools and stuff uh a lot of kids went to liberty university <laughs> where's liberty university that's in that's in virginia um why i about conservative yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um which like good so a couple of them like some of my best friends like uh, and and you know their president there is insane and they've like yeah he's he's crazy it's out of control yeah. um you know they have good it's a huge school they have like good athletics all that yeah. but that was probably the number one destination outside of just like university of buffalo that's and random Buff though, State. No? yeah pretty i mean small christian school right. uh Not it's like it's a holy a cross maybe. yeah 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 but just holy cross is probably more expensive yeah yeah it's pr- it's more reasonably priced uh, uh private school too so let's say that but but i would say the majority still stayed in in state um but in terms of anyone going anywhere that, that was probably top destination. So my grandpa uh, lives in Syracuse. So I spend, um, you know, I guess a lot of weekends of my childhood going up to upstate New York. Uh-huh. What did you guys do for fun around there? Uh, Malls <laughs> and shit? We're what? <laughs> Ding dong ditch? We were like 30 oh, minutes okay. from Canada. Oh, so nice. so in high school, what did we do for fun? Yeah, ding dong ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Walmart, like knock over boxes of rigatoni and call. <laughs> so you egg people on top of a Lowe's. We had, we had, um, <laughs> We w- <laughs> this is the dumbest thing we did is we'd get in the car and those little like siren apps put the sirens up and then the one wait, wait, wait what do you mean a siren <laughs> like app? like flashing lights on your f- on your iPhone yeah flashing lights <laughs> on the iPhone two people put it up front one person sticks an air horn out and there's just a siren on the air horn like as loud as an actual siren and we pulled someone over one time <laughs> like we didn't we stopped him we get to the car and we're like. W- we can't Wait, like what do you it. mean? Like you it. and your boy went on like the passenger side? No, and, like, we, we didn't get side. out of the car. We, but he like pulled off. We took him off and stuff, like, pulled him over. And uh, then we were just like, oh, we, we got to get out so of here. So you like waiting in there, like <laughs> taking down the license plate number, making sure <laughs> like, everything's fine. You're like, all right, dude, what the maybe hell? Maybe we, we don't here? impersonate an officer. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, what do we do for fun? Malls and impersonate officers. Really, really dumb stuff. Uh-huh. It was a lot of egging, a lot of, you know, lighting a bag of poop on someone's doorstep. So you know? I, so I, w- I went to UConn and like a number of uh, kids that I'm friends with and like still friends with. Actually, like most of the kids I stay close with, uh, were from Connecticut and from like Stanford, Stanford area in particular, uh-huh. like close-ish to Greenwich and like sure. the shit that they would get into high school just because like. There was r- nothing going on for them yeah. to be doing just besides just doing hooliganery stuff. You know what right, I mean? I right. guess, like, in the city, it was, like, easier to get in trouble directly just because, like, we'd go to a bar and we'd use our fake right. ID. And then our fake a- fake ID would get called um, into the police station or something okay, like that. Yeah. But I feel like you guys growing up in the suburbs, correct me if I'm wrong, like, mm-hmm. have discovered a way to be mischievous while not really um, getting caught. Yeah, like that being was sneaky. That was, it was a weird thing to where, like, I mean, the popular thing in high school to get in trouble is, like, drinking or drugs, right? That's, like, the big right. no-no. Yeah. And we had, like, none of that. The people I hung out with, none of that was ever happening. But we were, like, always doing the wildest stuff. The people at, like, the public <laughs> schools wouldn't be doing, like, messing with our teachers, just, like, really ran- We brought, like, chickens in <laughs> to, like, class without. We didn't For, like, do, a like, senior like, prank? Or just, yeah, like... Yeah, some <laughs> yeah, thi- things like that. Okay. Um, and we just... We just did dumb stuff. Nothing was really that malicious, but I felt like we were kind of viewed as like these kids are bad, whatever. And I'm like, we just did. We hadn't. We were bored. We just did nothing. Like, uh, like 
the one time I got like I just not even technically arrested, apprehended was like climbing on top of our high school just because we were like into climbing <laughs> yeah. at that point, and then we couldn't get down, so we go through the window and point out. It's like, yeah, of course, technically it's like breaking and entering, but like uh, we didn't do anything malicious ever. We were just really dumb. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's 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 so funny how just young kids just get into stupid shit all the time. Um, so Peter, how do you, how do you feel about the status? Uh, by the way, do you like Peter? Do you like Pete? Do you like uh-huh. P. Moran? I I, ooh, yeah. I think maybe I That's like P. Moran. Really nice now. swing, <laughs> yeah. dude. Also, Moran um is a last name from the show Blue Mountain State. Yeah. You ever watch that show? Yeah. So I just loved Alex oh. Moran, the star quarterback. So yeah, like that's it. But that's why, yeah, your name. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Uh, the second, well, sorry, the second string star quarterback. Yeah. But right, like your name was like, yeah, but your <laughs> name was like giving me um, his vibe. So funny, bro, that we met on Instagram. So yeah. I had um, like a random date uh-huh. with uh, this girl who I matched with on an app. I saw she had a podcast and she had, had like a number of cool guests on her uh-huh podcast so i was just like do you want to do a first date like on on um ted jones world and she's like yeah sure that's awesome so we had a nice little time and yeah. uh she's a good pal now so. i love i love your commitment to content you're like if i'm drinking coffee or i'm meeting someone like yeah it's, gonna bro, be it's going on dude like you said before like when you came here you're like all right well i don't do anything if it's not for the public eye <laughs> well here you go freaking <laughs> right saying, right yeah. on the world <laughs> do you still follow baseball at all randomly go back to that i i i like really cut it off like i know i mean i'll go to a few games uh here just because like i'll go to yankee stadium i was a mets fan ish um you know i cared in 2014 but really like through like middle school high school is when i cared most about sports i'm still a big uh football fan big bills fan but aside from that like i don't really keep up with professional sports like if i'm done with something like i'm pretty like wipe my hands clean i i, c- I kind of feel the same way like when so i r- i was telling you earlier i chose between baseball and tennis and mm-hmm. i chose tennis and uh that lasted like two and a half years in college for me mm-hmm. i went to uconn so it was like it was a really good opportunity to play yeah. tennis for sure and like i wanted to stay close to home mm-hmm. but i was just so over it i was like all right i'm not going pro they're fucking drug testing me like yeah. I'd much rather just not play tennis right now and just like smoke weed and chill and enjoy right. uh, college tennis yeah. for like a year and a half. But also, dude, I had failed like the drug test twice. So really? like, like <laughs> if I so if I failed for a third time, like it, w- it wasn't going to be good. So I was just yeah. like, all right, I'm not going to um, move forward with this just because like I was I was smoking a bunch of weed, man. What can I say? I wasn't doing like hard drugs or anything. Oh, yeah. And the thing was, like, it was annoying that like. There would be t- there would be periods of time where I couldn't smoke for six weeks. Well, whatever. I had a responsibility, and obviously they didn't want me to smoke weed. Fine, but during these six weeks, like I would just see kids get hammered on mm-hmm. the tennis team and blacked out, and like right. to the point where they couldn't even speak, and they were throwing up. They, the girls needed their hair, you know, held back. Whatever this crap was, and then meanwhile, right. if I wanted to smoke a joint in the forest <laughs> and like come back and have snacks, it was like yeah. such a <laughs> huge issue, and like that really pissed me off. Yeah. You're like, dude, I gotta, I gotta smoke. I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, ju- it was just like a, it was a crazy situation. But ultimately, um, I'm happy I got out of there when I did, mm-hmm. just because like I, w- I was over it. You know, playing for two, two and a half years uh, was more than enough for me. And the thing is, with tennis, maybe unlike baseball, but like with tennis, you kind of know if you're going to be like a mm-hmm. pro or even a top pro for that mm-hmm. matter by the time you're like 17 or 18 yeah so like when i was 16 years old and i started looking at colleges i was like kind of you know my pro dreams were way out the window but for me i thought they were maybe like kind of semi out the window okay but it just it just gets to that point where you're like all right you're playing so much tennis and it's just always you on the court mm-hmm. as opposed to like baseball like maybe you have like a lot of boys on the team so like you want to sure. keep playing and stuff but like yeah the tennis team and just not being in a frat it was just like it was a little much yeah it's, it's college sports are a huge commitment it's like if you don't love it i wouldn't i wouldn't do it i used to get so mad because i was like delusional i like i was holding on to the shred of hope that should have been long gone about playing professionally and that's what drove me and i would just be like on my teammates like you need to be working hard you need to be doing more who cares about like the school sleep less whatever just like you gotta be training with us but looking back it's like if yeah, if I didn't think I was going to go pro, like I couldn't care about it the way the way I did then. Like I don't think it's worth <laughs> I don't think it's worth doing for fun, you know? I think it's worth doing obsessively, but it's it's a huge waste of time otherwise. Right. <laughs> well, unless you're like really at a talent level where you don't have to work insanely hard yeah. and you can go out there and kind of just be like 
a run of the mill guy where you're like just yeah. as good as everyone else. Yeah. Maybe I mean that's a circumstance that would sure. be fun, you know. Sure. Get the ladies and whatever. Right. right. But but besides that, it's just like yeah, like you said, a little bit of a time waster, especially since like my grades weren't great. But the thing was in college, uh, which was nice, we like shared uh tutors with the basketball team. Yeah. So any any time we would like have a test or whatever, they would you typically have the test beforehand. And the basketball nice. team brings in like as you can imagine, like uh, hundred millions of dollars a year. They Kemba right, Walker right. when I was there, yeah. uh, Jeremy Lamb, all these insane basketball players, and they're bringing in all this money. And then meanwhile, the tennis team is costing you know the school money. Yeah. So like any opportunity we we had just to like get um, a step ahead in terms of like getting gear uh, from Nike, just because like the basketball team had such a sick mm-hmm. hookup, or like just getting the homework, we definitely yeah. took advantage of it. Uh, that must have, that must have been a ton of fun being yeah. at a school with a program yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, it, it was, um, but I think going from New York City to a suburb like Storrs, Connecticut, was just mm-hmm. kind of like mind-boggling for me, especially yeah. when I didn't meet anyone in all four years from Manhattan. Really? Yeah, like I met a couple, uh, like maybe two kids from Brooklyn and maybe three kids from Queens, and then wow. the rest, if they were from New York, were from Long Island or upstate New York. And then a huge majority of the school, I want to say like almost 50% is probably from Connecticut. Oh, for real? Like in state, yeah. And then yeah. you'd have kids from like New Hampshire, Rhode Island, um, kind of in that, you know. East Did pe- people have assumptions about you as a Manhattan guy? I think so, yeah. But also I think that like, do you believe in signs, kind of? Like birth signs, horoscopes. Um, no, stuff. but I, I'm, I can Are entertain you? it, but okay. no. All right, well, I'll, I'll intrigue you, I suppose. So like. I'm a Scorpio, okay. and I think that the Scorpio, the vibes that it puts off is just like um, I wouldn't be nice or like I yeah. wouldn't get along with people, which like okay. couldn't be more from the truth. Like right. I love being a nice, clean, good guy. Right. I'll hold the door for people. Sure. I'll say thank you when it's not fully necessary. But yeah, I'd say people would have reservations about yeah. me. You know, just so you're like an uptight like on Manhattan. the go. Like I've got a plan. I right. need to execute. Yeah. Right. Like you think I have time to deal with whatever <laughs> you got going on? What, which yeah. I do. You know <laughs> what I mean? I would assume that you would believe in science, being from <laughs> being from Manhattan. So maybe. And, I, and how believing in science? <laughs> in signs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The, the opposite. <laughs> 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 yeah, literally. Uh, but uh, today it said it was going to be a good day on the horoscope. I don't check yeah. it every day, but okay. I have some I have some Instagram accounts that I follow that let me know okay. it's going to be a good day. Keep or they're just like, oh, today it's going to be. Or today they told me they were like, you're going to meet a new friend. Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Look at this I right am. on my couch. Damn, I do I believe in science. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> when, are you, when are you born? When's your birthday? Uh, July 18th. July 18th. It's a cancer, I think. Cancer. cancer no. We get along. <laughs> Yeah. I've never dated a cancer chick, though, but like I'm, I'm looking forward to that because apparently I, I'm supposed to get along. With okay. a cancer chick. Gemini chicks, forget about it. Worst yeah. ever. What, what, what combats? Um, I don't know specifically, like, what uh, character trait uh-huh. combats, but, like, um, I think on one, one side is generally um, more committal. Uh, uh, that's mm-hmm. a word. Like, yeah. more committed, excuse me, to, like, sure. the other person. Like, they, they never okay. could really be committed at the same time. Yeah. It's just, like, like for f- when I was dating this Gemini biatch, mm-hmm. like, I was the most committed, and she was not. Like, that wasn't a good experience for me. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like pretty much every relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, just not connecting. Have you had a girl? Have you, when's the last time you had a girlfriend? Uh, last time I was, like, in a relationship yeah. was over a year ago. Uh, so maybe like summer 2019. What like happened? Summer. It wasn't anything too serious. I think we were great girl, good vibe, everything. Then just like one day, <laughs> one day she was like, wait, we're not going anywhere, are we? And I was oh like, oh my gosh, that's the realest thing you can say though. It was very real. And I was, I, uh. I was like, I thought you were more into me than I was into you. Oh That's my right. God, bro. That just <laughs> happened to me. With really? This girl I was hooking up with. I initially was like, we got to take it slow. Fucking two weeks go by. We're not taking it slow. We're going fast. I'm digging it. Yeah. And she's like, okay, we got to take it slow. Like, what the fuck? I said that already. <laughs> you can't, you can't do that. You cannot adjust. You cannot reign in a relationship. It's I, if you guys are moving too fast to begin with, then you crash and burn and it's over or you yes. somehow steady and maintain. You cannot address it and say, we need to slow down. And things last, like because the power imbalance is off. It's oh, over at this point. If I tell awful. you we need Egos to slow down, are shot, dude. It's over. It's over. About it. Like I was, I was into this girl. I wasn't so into her. But then once she wasn't into me, like bro, oh my god, I was like, I was like, how could she not be into me? There's nothing more attractive <laughs> than rejection. It's the yes. worst thing. It's it is the worst it's thing. Really but it's awful. so true. It's well, yeah. so true. And, and that's why like it. games are played because they're effective. 
Right. And even though when people are like girls are like, I don't want to play games, like I want Prince Charming. Yeah. Like, no, you don't. You want yeah. Jeff with three D Y. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. I would I, look, I would I would love to not play games. And I would say that I sure. don't I don't. And I get and I think that people are sincere. I don't want to play games. But ultimately, like we're just wired this way. We can't even help it. Ultimately, like, oh wait, you're busy now? Okay, yeah, I am into you. I do want to hang out. That's just how it is. I don't I don't know how to I don't know how to avoid it. My plan, I, I think I set myself up. I'd rather risk embarrassment with like being overly sincere and like, yeah, I'm into it. If you're into it, I'll wait, whatever. Right. But it's like, it puts you in the worst situation, but I think that's the only way to ever like fully connect and be like, all right, yeah, we actually are both on the same page. Yeah. So, wait, so how long you were together for like a year? No, it was like half a year. Okay. So like, like six months. Yeah. And we were, I mean, it was good. I, she, she was cool. We got along great. I think we probably just like were friends that were attracted to each other. Did you, you know? live together? No. From home, she was from home or no? No, th- it was it was around here. Uh, just uh, another girl in Manhattan. Uh, we met on an app, and the thing about that is like, mm. you meet and it goes well, then you do another and you do another, and you just kind of well naturally how do you mean? get there. Like, like when like you match with them, you go on a date with them, and then like if it goes well, you continue to progress. As opposed to like if I met you out in the wild, we could be hanging out, we <laughs> could be friends for a portion of time, uh, and then yeah. like they come like into you, but you already have this like is this a romantic thing from, right. from the get go? Mm-hmm. So we just naturally progressed that. Whereas like if we had met in real life, who knows if we ever would have given a shot, we got along, we were attracted to each other, all that. But like, yeah, she was, she was spot on. Like, yeah, we are never going to be like for real. We are never, g- but, but you are right about the, the rejection. Cause now I realized like a week later, I was like, we should get back together. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, yeah, yeah. maybe, Maybe this isn't working out. Maybe this is going to end. And then she ended, and I was like, I yeah, love you. <laughs> I don't, wait, you're the love of my life. How my, can you say this dude, to me? Like, literally, I told I told my boy when I was like, when I, when, or look, I guess when she kind of was just like, yeah, like, we're moving too fast. I just, I told my boy, I was like, yeah, man, like, I'm pretty upset. He's like, dude, you're not upset. Your ego's just bruised. Like, yeah. you're fine. Don't worry about it. Like, it wasn't going to work anyway. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> I think that that's just how it goes, though. That's just very consistent. What about you? You said this this just happened. Yeah, yeah. this was uh, this was probably like six weeks ago, but I had only been hooking up with this girl for like a month anyway. Okay, so it's just like the whole thing was kind of new. Whatever. Uh, she had been with a boyfriend for like a year and a half. Broke up with him, I think, and then like four weeks later, I started hooking up with her, and it, it mm-hmm. was it was moving fast. How long out of the rela- or how long was her relationship? She was. I think out? a year and a half, okay. something like that, and. They had just moved into an apartment together, but he le- left like two months after the lease. So like the first time I went to her apartment, mm-hmm. um, like there was still some of his stuff there. And she was like, yeah, like he's leaving and this and that. Yeah. So it was just like the timing was just not there. You could feel it. I've, yeah, I've been down that road. Yeah. A, yeah. And like uh, now uh, or I, I'd like to think that I've learned, you know, my lesson in terms of holding back a little bit. But I think like now I'm I'm I I really want to force myself to uh listen to myself like every time that i mm-hmm. br- break it off with a chick or whatever just because like i feel like so many things have to be right now for me to be like fully happy where i'm like all right um uh, i'm not chasing this girl or this girl's not chasing me like i've been going to the gym like super early in the morning and just like yeah. if i had a chick in my queen bed and like i'm waking up at like 5 30 a.m like yeah. What am I gonna do when I get back from the gym at seven thirty? Is she gonna be sleeping till ten? Yeah. Like, what if I want to spark up a doob at like <laughs> nine a.m.? Like, I don't, I don't need that judgment. You know yeah. What I mean? Now the, uh, you when when you start to like spend some time alone, especially like it's different like in college or younger, whatever. But like when you're you're here, you're living on your own, you're doing your thing. You've actually established a life for yourself. Then it becomes a much larger barrier to entry if right. someone's gonna be a part of that. When you're just like looking for what's next, mm-hmm. unsure what you want to do with your life. Everyone in New York for the first two years, just like getting drunk on a Wednesday night. Totally. It's like, whatever. Yeah. Sure. I'll pass the time with you. Right. But when you, yeah, when you have a vision for your life, like the people that you date are like very, very few. Yeah. So I, I don't know, man, I could be taking a hiatus. We'll see. I mean, yeah. I did take a, a pretty long hiatus. Like when I first had my jaw surgery, uh-huh. I had a girlfriend, which was 2019 of July. Yeah. And then like two weeks after I got surgery, I was just like, I can barely talk like this relationship is, you know, s- was slowly starting to deteriorate. Great mm-hmm. girl. She was just a lot younger than me uh-huh. and she always wanted to go out. I always wanted to stay in mm-hmm. and it just got to the point where my face couldn't fucking move. <laughs> and like for me to talk, it was really like yeah. an issue and a chore. Yeah. And me being like, ah, yeah. And like her wanting to talk to me and this and that. And I'm just like, 
right? Like as I'm like, I'm sorry, I gotta have to break up with you. And she's like, Are you seeing someone else? I'm like, Look at my <laughs> <you> fucking <laughs> face. So uh, between like uh, July, I guess, and October, I was just like to myself, just because I was healing. And then also when I went on that first date in October, like I had the baddest face. Like I can't yeah. believe I was actually going out with chicks, like yeah. looking like this. And so like my, f- I still my chin is like. A little bit numb, mm-hmm. but I guess it's slowly getting back to normal. Yeah. The doctor said two years after I'll, s- I'll see my. You don't. You don't want to make moves until you're in your prime. Though. Yeah, you, th- you know what? That's what I'm thinking. Like I'm not. You know, like you have to wait to get into a relationship before you. You know, yeah. you're healed and stuff. Yeah. Like I think it could. It could mean <laughs> you know I'm waiting until my face is healed. Yeah. But dude, I'm still I'm still pluck plucking away at the dating apps though. Don't let yeah. that don't let that confuse you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of forced uh, hiatus lately, uh, for for the most part. But then there's a you know people bounce back, people bounce back and are like really excited. Oh, we can go out and see people. Oh, we can go out on first yeah. dates again. People are excited about that. I don't, I don't know. I'm I am definitely more of a like live what you describe, wake up early, go to the gym, live my life by myself, do my thing type of guy in general. So it is a strong barrier. Right. But it's also scary a little bit, man. Like, I don't know if I want to do like be by myself always all the, like what I do. Like I love my daily routine and shit, but like there's, a, there's occasionally some time where I just want to hang out with someone, but go ahead. No, that's, that's what you were saying. It's very true. I think, I think the sweet spot is like a little bit begrudgingly spending a tiny bit more <laughs> your time than you want with someone. I would rather that. And then you're excited. Oh, I'm on my own now. I got to like take advantage of this time when you're always on your own. It's even, it's almost harder to be productive. Cause you're just like, I just have this endless mass of time in for no real purpose. Right. Uh, so I don't know. There, there's a balance, but I think I'm, I'm very bullish on the future of New York socially. In ha- oh, socially. Yeah. So you feel like rents are going to bounce back? Because, you know, rents are the lowest they've been since, like, 2008. Yeah. No yeah. joke. Like, yeah. Street Easy is showing it how it is right now, and it's it's, it's wild out there. Wild, oh. wild, wild. Did you get a rent reduction? I'm in the midst of an argument. Yes, with my, I, go At this ahead. point, like, I got a tiny one at the start, and then I just emailed, and I was like, this is ridiculous. We I both bet. know I'm way overpaying right now. Yeah. Take care of this or, like. I'm just going to default on this rent and we both lose. Like, you're right. not going to rent that place out for a year. Yeah, and especially at the rent you're paying, no shot. Ridiculous. And chances are they won't even get the rent that they're getting now with you until yeah. 2022 at oh, least. Forever. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, can we just be honest here? Let's let's meet each other in the middle at least. But, like, I'm sick of just paying for something that's not worth it anymore. So what were, you sa- what were you saying about the social scene in New York? I think it's going to pop. I think people are just going to be so thrilled to be out there, to be around people, make out with strangers. I think <laughs> that's going to happen. I think I'm going to... I'm going to revert back a little bit probably to like, cause I mean the last two years has pretty much just been like, all right, work's done. Time to go hit the mics, whatever. Uh, I think I'm going to be, you know, just one of those uh, many faces on St. Mark's for, for a little bit. <laughs> just just one of those there. bars down there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, lo- there's a huge ch- lady pool down there, man. And yeah. some bros, if you want to make some more friends, like yeah, we've just true. made this beautiful friendship today. Exactly. And we didn't even need to be uh, wrecked at uh, Byron St. Mark's for it. No, ex- exactly. I man. think this no. Is this is like we're and we're also drinking water out of yeah. these red cups. By the way, you guys think it would just be like some whiskey straight? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, Peter, just have their P Moran, just have that <laughs> fresh whiskey, keep it going. Yeah, I don't think I've made a new friend or had a first kiss Bro, with zero alcohol. Me in too. Years. Should we just can't we'll get both <laughs> them at the same time, dude? <laughs> right now, hilarious, bro. Seriously, I can't remember the last time I made a friend. And yeah. look, I got I got a new friend over here and uh, Pete Moran. But um, bro, what's on what's on tap for the rest of the year? It is December first. Mm-hmm. Um, just I guess quickly before we end episode sixty eight here, what's what's on tap for December and then moving into uh, twenty twenty one for you? I I'm tr- I'm trying to wrap up what what I was doing this year writing wise personally. Then I'm gonna get to Buffalo. I'm gonna spend two weeks just chill out, hang out with the family for Christmas. Yeah, nice. yeah. Hopefully things are right for me to be able to get there and yeah. you know not get anyone covered. Just hang out and then. And then it's finding finding where the vaccines are coming from, shooting myself up, and getting out there doing it again. I Dude, I'm down to shoot myself up too. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'll whatever. If you tell me it's fifty percent effective, fifty percent, I die. I'll take it. Let's flip that coin. So uh, my mom is dating a doctor, and and he is like an OR doctor, so mm-hmm. he I guess is susceptible to COVID. Mm-hmm. He took the Moderna uh, vaccine trial. And mm-hmm. he was fine the first after the first shots, two shots, yeah. and then the second shot, he was like sick as a dog for twenty four hours, and mm-hmm. then was fine. Okay, 
So, I mean, if it's like that, I think that that's usually worth it. Do you get a flu shot usu- usually? Not really. I'm not a big needles guy. I, okay. I do when I'm feeling conscientious enough to do it, but I hate it. But for this, I mean, whatever. Right. As long as it's, if it's yeah. going to carry the worldwide pandemic. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. I just want permission to go out and do my thing. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Peter, thank you so much. You've been a lovely ghost, man. I'm g- ghost. A lovely <laughs> guest. Yeah. The opposite of a ghost. Guess thank ghost. you, everyone, so much for tuning in and watching rate comment subscribe bro shout out your tiktok shout out your ig so we can follow you i'm peter moran m-o-r-a-n on everything follow me there i got a lot of new stuff coming ted jones messed with the wrong melon farmers ted jones i also call him the eighth wonder of the real estate world ted jones who knows you know it could be ted jones the ted jones world podcast